Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Reina Magawa. She's going to speak on um, value of adding platelet rich plasma to non cultured epidermal cell suspension in surgical treatment of stable vitiligo. Over to you. Thank you. Um, my talk is about the value of adding platelet rich plasma to non cultured epidermal cellular suspension. In the surgical treatment of resistant vitiligo, this was a self controlled, randomized, double blinded study. As you all know, acre vitiligo followed by the vitiligo overlying joints are quite resistant to different modalities of treatment, including the surgical treatment. And platelet-rich plasma has been reported to enhance the repigmentation of different therapeutic modalities of vitiligo, including the vitiligo surgery. And thus we aimed at evaluating the role of suspending the non-cultured epidermal cellular suspension in PRP in cases of acral vitiligo and resistant vitiligo lesions overlying the joints. Known the resistant nature of these lesions, we try to optimize our results using a low expansion ratio of one donor skin to three recipient area. And we added the PRP as an optimizing tool to the melanocyte palette on one side, while on the other lesion, we added lactated ringer. We gave our patients thrice weekly excimer laser sessions for a duration of three months. This was a randomized, self-controlled, double-blinded clinical trial that included non-segmental vitiligo cases having either two comparable acral lesions, either symmetrical or in the same anatomical area, or vitiligo lesions overlying the joints that were resistant to the medical treatment. We excluded segmental vitiligo as well as any patients who received any topical or systemic treatment in the past three months. Before doing the surgery, we evaluated the baseline platelet count for our patients, the baseline surface area using the point counting technique, as well as regional pigmentation using the VASTA score. The non-cultured epidermal cellular suspension was done by harvesting the donor skin via tear graft, followed by putting it in the trapsin in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes, after which the suspension was prepared and centrifuged getting a melanocyte pellet. The melanocyte pellet was suspended on one side in the PRP and on the other side in lactated drink. The recipient site was prepared using carbon dioxide laser resurfacing. All the steps were repeated twice for two comparable patches using a low expansion ratio of one to three. After complete healing, the patients were given excimer light sessions for three, uh, thrice weekly for a total duration of three months. At eight weeks, preliminary um, assessment was done using the VESTA score as well as physician global assessment. At three months, the patients were evaluated for the surface area of the lesions following surgery using point counting, lesional pigmentation using the VESTA score, physician global assessment, patient satisfaction, and color match. We evaluated 30 patients, 17 met the inclusion criteria, and 15 only uh, completed distance. Most of the patients were having acral vitiligo overlying the feet. Regarding the pre procedural assessment, there was no significant difference between the PRP uh, suspended non cultured epidermal suspension and the ring relative suspended non cultured epidermal suspension regarding the baseline VESTA score and surface area of the lesions prior to the surgery. At eight weeks, on both the PRP and the ring relactate site, the VESTA score increased significantly in comparison to the baseline before the surgery. However, there was no difference between the PRP suspended non cultured epidermal suspension and the ring relactate suspended non cultured epidermal suspension regarding the legional pigmentation following surgery. At three months, um, we re evaluated the patients using the physician global assessment. Well, half of the patients had excellent free pigmentation, and on both sides, the VESTA score significantly increased after non cultured epidermal suspension in comparison to the values prior to the surgery. Similarly, the surface area significantly decreased on both the PRP suspended non cultured epidermal suspension side and the ringular lactate suspended non cultured epidermal suspension. However, on compar comparing both sides together, there was no difference regarding the lesional pigmentation as per the VESTA score, the surface area of the lesions as regarding the, po as regards the point counting, the physician global assessment, as well as the patient satisfaction and the color match. 
Different disease characteristics and the baseline investor score and the platelet count were not of influence on the change in the surface area as well as the change in pigmentation. Here are examples of our patients. This patient showed good repigmentation at eight weeks and excellent repigmentation at three months with no difference between both sides. This patient showed moderate repigmentation with no difference between both sides. And this patient showed mild repigmentation with no difference between the PRP and the lactated drink. So, despite previous promising studies on the PRP in vitiligo surgery, none of the conducted studies were selecting only resistant acral lesions and lesions overlying the joints. In addition, some of the studies included both segmental and non-segmental vitiligo, and they evidently differ in the response to vitiligo surgery. In addition, our study was a self-controlled study. So, despite trying to optimize our surgical technique using a low expansion ratio, giving the patient examiner night sessions for three months, suspending the melanocyte pellet and PRP did not prove to be of value in the surgical treatment of acrovitiligo and vitiligo overlying joints. So, PRP offered no privilege in surgical treatment of acrovitiligo and vitiligo um, overlying the joints, which are quite resistant to treatment. Um, a kind reminder for the VIS, and we'll be happy to welcome you in Egypt, and thank you.